Hello everyone and welcome back to Constraints TV. We got to do some raid testing today. It was day three of raid testing. We got to try out the potential third boss in Nurabar Palace. And then we also got to try out the second last boss. So Sikram, Captain of the Sakuri. And then we also got to try out the Silken Court. So let's jump into it and talk about what these fights are at. Because I think I just found my, my new favorite boss encounter going into the War Within. So starting with Sikram, Captain of the Sakuri. So this is a one phase boss fight and basically right off the rip we lusted and popped all of our cooldowns. There's a tank mechanic that does two exposes and a phase lunge. You basically want to take two of the exposes taunt and then take the phase lunge as the off tank. There is a simulacrum that gets dropped and left behind when the boss does phase blades. Three players are marked and then they get these red arrows over the head. They want to run these red arrows out to the edge. Anyone who gets hit by that mechanic will end up taking two million damage per hit. And then as you can see, they actually leave these, these images, the simulacrums of the player that dropped the debuff. Those get broken by a mechanic called Decimate. Players will be marked with a blue line over their head. And this blue line is what you want to run out and target at those simulacrums. This is the Reign of Arrows mechanics. You just dodge these like you would anything else. But here it is. Here's that blue. They get the blue lines. And the lines go and blow up those simulacrums. When they explode, they will leave cosmic shards everywhere. And then they also leave the growing puddle on the ground that you have to stay out of. As the fight continues, there's one other major mechanic where the boss does a massive AoE, right? So here it is again. We get the red line over ourselves. I run it out to the edge. It dashes through us. It only hit us, not the whole raid this time, which is really good. That's what you want. So... As you can see, there's clones left on the one side of the edge of the room, and all they got to do is we take the debuffs again when the decimates come out, and we run them out, and we point them at those. Those are each pulsing AoE damage every two seconds. As you can see, they run out. Lines come out. They smash all the simulacrums. When any simulacrum that's missed, the boss does a mechanic called Shattering Sweep, and here it is. What happens when Shattering Sweep goes off, it actually explodes all of the remaining simulacrums for a large amount of damage. Now, it's recommended to run out of that. Um, I tried to stay in the one. It actually didn't do that much damage, so it wasn't that bad. Um, I'm sure this is going to increase in numbers, but that is basically the whole fight. And once again, as you can see, people get the red marks. They run this out to the edge to try to avoid hitting each other. You can line this up. So it's kind of like Sire Denathrius, where you can line the lines up with Wormornia, and that way it doesn't hit other players, because it's doing the same thing. It's basically selecting three players and then charging those players. Once the Simulacrums are out, once again... There's a tank mechanic, it's on repeat, expose, expose, phase lunge, taunt, phase lunge, then we get the rain of arrows, and then we'll get the decimate mechanic, and that will blow up those simulacrums, and that is really the whole fight. This one for a third boss, I think is really, really cool. It's not overly complicated, it doesn't hit really hard, it is definitely a healer fight. The healing numbers are significantly high in this, and it's high on tank failure if you miss one of those lunges. If one tank takes two, they will die right away because the expose leaves a dot that will get to, that makes them take more physical damage. Everything in this boss is physical damage. Why did I just open my spell book in the middle of a boss fight? What was I thinking? Because this was the kill pull as well. I am so sorry, fans. But here we go. We're back to the boss. There's the simulacrums at the bottom there. The screen, you can see them. There's the blue lines coming out, and they will destroy them. And as you see, bam damage comes out healing numbers continue to increase there we had five healers here and they were actually doing a lot of healing as you can see the paladins are just destroying the healing meters right now rain of arrows you want to dodge shattering sweep you want to run out of again that is a mechanic that's going to blow up any remaining cosmic simulacrums and you're going to take a lot more damage from those so that's why you want to be very it's very important to clear we did a thing where we just kited the boss around the outside of the room the reason for that is because when we tried the, the strat where we kept the boss in the middle the room filled up way too quickly and we actually ran out of room right because every time you blow up the cosmic simulacrums the room starts to fill up with those puddles so again take it out to the side we're going to get the, the decimate we're going to blow those up puddles get left on the ground and we continue we just kind of kited the boss around the outside of the room and that that's i think that's going to be the strat even on live not a ton of damage goes there's there's really good parts in this fight where you can just stand around and you can just zug zug the boss and do as much damage as you can so it's kind of really good for a third boss it's going to be a lot of fun for healers and it has the tank mechanic where you actually have to pay attention kind of like the Rashok mechanic when you take two crushes and a flaming slash and then you would die same thing two exposes and a phase lunge you could live one of them but it actually ramps the fight goes on so the second one you are dead 
so that's why you want to taunt off yeah that is it that is the fight we continue to do that over and over and over again so really cool five minute fight i think later on in the expansion this boss is going to fall over in probably sub two minutes it's right it's pretty simple there when we kind of out gear the heroic raid and then we're going on to mythic i'm excited to see what this boss can do in mythic overall i think this is a great third boss great design everything is visually appealing you can see the mechanics you can see what's happening you can see the arrows in your over your head the puddles are clear i think they did a fantastic job with this fight even the swirlies on the ground you can see where they're landing where they are you, you can easily dodge them unless they're in the puddle but you shouldn't be there anyway so that is the potential third boss of the nurabar palace Sikram, captain of the sakuri very well done here blizzard this was a lot of fun um and i am looking forward to to trying this on live and seeing how the tuning varies a little bit once it gets to live. And next up, we have what I think is my favorite fight so far in the War Within, the Silken Court. It's a council-style boss where they share the health pool. So, on pull, we popped Lust, and then we pulled the boss, we have them together. You get these AoE greet poison puddles around you every time they pop if you're on top of someone you will get a stacking debuff that does more damage to you so you kind of don't want to be on top of each other it's not significantly dangerous but it will stack eventually it will get higher these scarabs these scarabs basically have a debuff that when they hit you they lower your armor by five percent and this stacks and they are also immune to crowd control effects so they are very dangerous if they get to a caster they will or a caster or someone who doesn't have very good defensives once again you have these abilities now this is the really cool part of the fight the boss drops these webs and as you can see in the top left of your screen we actually have to tether each other and have the boss run through those webs to stop him from hitting the wall if he hits the wall you take a massive amount of damage and you will wipe the raid we did that a few times on our first few pulls and that's what wiped right after that he does a frontal you just dodge it mainly you want to stay on anubarash during the entire fight Again, here are the webs. If two people walk into those webs, they get a spider web link around them. And that link is used to stop the boss from charging into the wall. And it will basically wipe the raid because it does so much AoE damage. So as the fight kind of commences, that is on repeat. The queen will dash away. Queen to cash will leap away and do her own set of abilities. She will do a poison blast. And then eventually there's later on in the fight, there's a mechanic that will actually pull you in. So there she comes back again. Again, you just stay on a new barrage. This is also a three phase boss and it gets really, really cool as the fight goes on. So he will actually barrow poison spikes and there it is this is the charge that he does we're on the other side we're gonna have people with webs that are actually stopping the boss from hitting the wall and he just kind of stops there and it's free damage you just funnel into the boss when this happens now coming up is kind of when the second phase starts to begin right right after there's your frontal you want to dodge it and then the queen again Takaj is just sitting over off the side doing her own thing. Tanks eventually kind of stock the bosses on top of each other during the first phase. In P2, you actually don't want them together. So this is kind of like the intermission mission phase where Takaj goes into the middle, has a massive shield you have to break, and she spits out all these spider webs around you. Spider webs then burst a purple void damage, and so you just move out of the most recent one that just casted, right? So you see the first one there on my right? I'm going to wait for that to pop, and I'm just going to move over to the right. If you are in one of those, it actually just does a knockback. It does but it's a big knockback it'll push you to the to the edge of the room and you will you lose uptime on the boss not crazy and this happens three times once you break the shield once the shield is broken a new barash comes back out again and basically you just follow a new barash around the caster stays in the middle of the room a new barash does his frontal the piercing strikes happen there is a mechanic here that the mechanic is called stinging swarm and what happens with stinging swarm is three people get these it's like a purple aoe around you your whole screen flickers i actually get a little later in the fight and what you want to do is make a triangle around the queen so here the queen pulls you in in this phase you run out of it people are webbed you're going to need that web for the dashes they will still break if you go too far and right now so i have one of these the stinging swarm around me it fills your screen it is it is very easily to see and what you want to do is when the boss teleports into the middle of the room you want to be able to make a triangle. What we did is we masked the spell to put the dot back on the boss and prevent this cast from going off because this entropy will completely destroy the entire raid. It will wipe you. 
So that goes off, mass the spell, and then it stuns the boss, pausing that cast. Really, really cool mechanic. What you would do in life if you don't have a priest is you just have three dispels. Really cool how that works. So here it is again. You get pulled in, you run out of the pull, and you continue hitting a Nubarash, and then three people get marked once again. And I was one of those lucky people that got marked. And all you do is dodge the frontals. You got the spider webs you're dodging, the frontal from a Nubarash. And once again, you go into the middle of the room. You see, I have it, the evoker has it, and then one other person has it in the top of your screen there. We dodge the frontal, we wait for the boss to teleport into the middle of the room, and once it does, and we had a second priest. So once again, we just mass dispelled it off, and it stunned the boss from doing the major AoE cast that will, the entropy, that, that will wipe the raid. We had a couple go off, and it was significant damage. But here it is, we run out. And then right after, and I had a spider web there too and it broke. I took no damage. But here I am. I run back in. We send the master spell and it stuns the boss once again. Really cool. The coordinate, coordination and different mechanics in this boss that require a teamwork and effort. That's what makes this boss so much fun right now. You have the spider webs that you get to link together and stop the charge. And then you also have a dispel in the second phase. It is so much fun. So here, and this is where now a Nubarash gets his shield and these, this rage mechanic causes spikes to spawn in circles all around the room. This was so cool to dodge and so cool to play around. And then it's so visible, right? So it kind of mixes like a little bit of Siege Crafter from Soldier of Orgrimmar, a little bit of Urog during the Earth phase where you have to run out of that. That's what this is, but it, there's multiple layers of it happening. One big circle filled up over here. Little layers everywhere else. Such a cool mechanic while you're breaking the shield. This was so much fun to play. And once again, the bosses are back out. And this is definitely a longer fight. I mean, we're five and a half minutes in and only 34%. We were scaled to about 610. And yeah, the, we just keep going. Again, this is now phase three where we get a combination of the mechanics. The cash will do a swarm that you just you it's aoe damage and you just have to eat that damage the front will still happen from both bosses so here's that swarm that i'm talking about you just sit there and you have to eat the damage healers have to heal through it i think that's going to scale exponentially once you get into mythic and then on top of that you continue to get the spike storm from abanubarash it's all over the boss you get pulled by takai still you get the spider webs for the charges as well like there, there is so much happening in this boss that it i believe it has become my favorite one. So here's those spider webs, right? So this is why you get them randomly in this last phase, but I think you need a certain amount of them to actually get through the phase. Because if this boss lasts longer, you won't have enough to break through or stop him from hitting the wall and you're gonna wipe. And at almost the seven minute mark, you do not want to wipe the raid. That would feel so bad because you ran out of revs because too many people snapped them. So this is a cool thing. You want to stay with your partner when you have the the tether to you, the web tether. You want to stay with your stay with your partner for the dispels for the cash when during the second phase. And that is the entire fight. Again, here's a massive frontal that the boss does. The cash flips to the other side of the room and actually spreads her frontal twice. And you just stay on to cash. You just keep going. There's those swarms once again. So everything happens in P3. The swarms happen in P3. The spider links happen in P3. The ads happen in no. There's no ads. I apologize. That sounds wrong, but this is this is the whole fight. This is so much fun. Here she goes. She's in the middle, and if you don't if you don't dispel this correctly, you could wipe the raid at seven minutes. And in this boss fight, it is still wipeable. But yeah, there you go. They stun the boss. We continue to stay on a new barrage. And yes, they you can AOE these bosses. It is kind of hard to keep them together at times because because Takaj jumps around. But that is the whole fight. This has to be one of my favorite bosses in the rain so far this and princess caveza are phenomenally weighed bosses and everything is telegraphed perfectly it's visible you know what's happening i am thoroughly impressed with this boss great job blizzard this is a 10 out of 10 fight and i can't wait to experience this on live from both a tank and dps perspective so yeah overall fantastic with these two bosses i'm really excited for tomorrow we got mythic raid testing I'll put out some stuff then, but this was so much fun, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you think of these fights down in the comments below.